Carlton Duck here. So glad you've joined us on Spiritual Perspective. And today we're going to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 21, verse, dealing with surviving the wilderness. So, preacher, I'll tell you, that, that message title sure is applicable to what we've been through and going through. Well, the fact is we are too engaged in survival instead of being involved in trust and faith. Yeah, the world is not your friend, and the devil is out to devour you, but here's the good news. God's for you, and God's with you. You have nothing to fear today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spiritual Perspective, and I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Lynchburg. You can find us so easily at our beautiful facility here at 411 Blue Ridge Street, beautiful grounds, pretty green grass, rose bushes. Oh, it's just a beautiful facility and a great, great place to come and worship the Lord. Well, only one block off of Route 221, that is Lakeside Drive, right here in the heart of Lynchburg. And uh, you'll be blessed by coming to either our 930 or our 1130. And if you feel so inspired, you can come to both of them if you want to. We peeled the tape off of the pews and we've opened up some. And we're just praying that uh, you'll come and be a part of what God's doing here at Gethsemane. We'd love to have you, 930, 1130. And also you can join us on Facebook every Wednesday. That's always a great time in Topic Talk. That's at 5 p.m. And then, of course, we follow up with that and come back with a season of live prayer at 7 p.m. So that's a great place for you to be. You can find out about a new addition that we've got to our Facebook page. It's called Cooking with Carlton. Now, don't think I'm going to tell you how to cook. I can fix a few things, but uh, we're going to be sharing some of the recipes from our cookbooks that we've had here at Gethsemane from our people and you'll find some good things to eat. And since then, we've had people rolling in some other uh, recipes that we're going to use. It's a great place to find something good to eat. It's easy to fix and you can enjoy. So Cooking with Carlton on our Facebook page, that's Carlton Duck. Also, uh, we're going to invite you to visit us on our website, AliveGBC.com. I get every week on my phone a digital bulletin that I can read through and find out what's going on in the church and get all kinds of great information. I can also find out about music. I can find out about the message. I can find out about those who are uh, going through and need prayer. It's just a host of things. This is better than any printed bulletin we have ever had, and it's absolutely phenomenal. How did I get it? Very easy. Go to livegbc.com. And go down to the foot of the page and just do some clicking and you can be on it in 10 seconds or less. It's that easy. It is easy. And it costs you nothing. So come on and be a part of our digital bulletin. Bring your kids to our ministry where we have for kids each Sunday at 930 and 1130. And it's called Kitty Care Kit. It's for teens. It's for the little ones. It's for all the kids. It's gauged so that they can have a great time in it. And it's very useful in their life. Man, we're reaching and stretching for everything that we can get to bring you more of Jesus here at Gethsemane. And I believe you'll be blessed. Let's talk today about this issue of survival in the wilderness. And David did not go from a hero, giant killer to king immediately. We talked on um, the Viewpoint program. We talked about David's great victory over Goliath this week. And also we realized that David in that quest and what had happened, he didn't go immediately from a giant killer to being a king. And there was a, a time, of, really there was a wilderness chapter of about 10 to 12 years that he had to go through in order to get to that place. Realize today that God works on his timetable and we've got to learn to trust him in all things. So immediately he became a hero, though in what he had accomplished in this great victory over Goliath, he became a hero, an army leader, and really he was marked by, uh, uh, he became married rather to the king's daughter and best friends with the king's son. And I mean, look like, man, he was just in the right place at the right time, as the old saying goes. 
But there was a problem. You realize the more popular David became, the more insane in jealousy King Saul became about David. So now Saul's plan is to do what? To kill David? Are you kidding me? The man that God used to deliver the uh, children of Israel from bondage of the Philistines and the great victory that he'd given David over this giant named Goliath. And now Saul is thinking about, hmm, he's, he's a threat. And I'm insanely jealous and I'm just going to have to see that he gets killed. So he had to flee into the wilderness, an area occupied by other tribes, the Philistines and Amalekites. And that's where David had to hang out because his life was threatened. God was leading him. God was in everything that was going on. So living in a, uh, a, a familiar part of, of Bible stories, we find that Moses had to flee into the wilderness after he killed a man. And he spent many years basically raising uh, the, the sheep for the family there in a desert place. And so Moses encountered God in the wilderness uh, and that wilderness was a burning bush that was not consumed. And God spoke to him and God called him to go uh, from the wilderness to Egypt and to lead the children of Israel out of the bondage that they had been in for 400 years. Now, Jesus began his ministry with baptism and a wilderness temptation. You remember that? He spent that time in the wilderness in prayer. And we all know something about the wilderness living. I mean... We've all been there somewhat, haven't we? Maybe we didn't uh, walk around and eat uh, honey and wild locusts as John the Baptist did, but maybe we have experienced some of the wildernesses of life and some of the problems that we've faced. And so, you know, most of us have had those chapters and those places. I could reel a few off to you, but I'm not. You know what? That's in the rearview mirror, and I'm not looking back. I'm pressing towards the mark, the prize of the high calling that is in Christ. So the, the wilderness is where you find people that are fearful. That's where you also find people who are defeated. And that's where people you'll find they're hiding because all they want to do is try to survive through life. And man, have we had that for the last 14 months. People hiding out, trying to survive, trying to get through, letting basically everything go and just stopping almost living to one, one degree from that standpoint. But how do you survive in those wilderness days of our lives? Do you just sit around and give up and and just uh, turn your eyes away from God or you do, do you look to Him? There's a lesson that we can learn from David that I think is applicable to all of us in that, in that circumstance of life. So David, he fled the king's palace. He went from being famous to being a fugitive and he went from being a hero to being hunted by, by the king. So there was one constant in David's life, and that was King Saul. I mean, Saul was relentless. He was bound and determined that he was going to remove David out of the situation. So the king wanted only one thing, David's death. That's the priority. He slept it, he ate it, he drank it. That's what his focus was every day. So what do you do to escape your problems, to avoid the enemies of life, and really escape your fears that you're facing in life? Well, you know, some folks choose to go to drugs. Some choose alcohol. Some choose sex. Some choose uh, horrible wayward living. I mean, all these things of the world to try to escape. You're not escaping nothing. As a matter of fact, you are actually, actually adding to your problems in life. Dave was at, at the brink of, I guess we could say he was at, a, at the place of no man's land in one sense of the speaking. So that the wilderness journey is always a downward path, isn't it? It becomes defeating, discouraging. You get dismayed. So David had basically, here's the guy that defeated Goliath. It was on top of the world. And now he's at the very bottom. He had lost everything. His downward path included desperation. That's what happens when you start the downward path. You become desperate. Secondly, it brought about the atmosphere of deceit. You know, uh, he, he went through things to get food. He lied and, 
you know, he basically did not represent the truth. Third, he found himself in deception. You know, he had on one occasion, uh, basically, he had to act like an insane man to escape basically the enemy's kings or the enemy's king. So there was a lot of things. Then fourthly, we find David was in a place, a downward place of danger. He had fled from a cave to cave to cave, hiding from the obsessed king, Saul, who was determined he was going to take him out of the picture. So David was alone, or he thought he was. Maybe you think you're alone today. Maybe you think, man, I just, you know, I feel like I'm fighting this battle by myself. You know why you feel that way? It's because you have chosen to feel that way. You won't call upon the Lord. You will not look to Jesus. You will not trust in him. So guess how you feel? You feel alone and defeated. You feel discouraged. You feel like you can't make it through. And folks, that's what happens to us in those places of life where we choose defeat over deliverance, where we choose the world over winning in Christ, where we choose to be burdened rather than to be blessed. And God has a greater blessing in store for you, but you've got to get in a position where God can work in your life. At your time, you can read about really the turning point that happened in David's life is found in 1 Samuel 22, and this verse is 1 through 5. So David found a stronghold, he found a place of safety, and David found a place of retreat. It was a cave, and so he, even his family had joined him in this cave. He thought, finally, I've got refuge. Finally, i got safety. And it forced, you know, basically forced some things to happen in his life. And at this point, David began to assume responsibility then for others. And earlier, he was thinking only of himself. And you know, you and I, we have responsibilities for our family. I have responsibility not only to my family, but to my church. I have responsibility ultimately to God and to others. So therefore, it's important to realize you've got a responsibility. You can't sit there and throw in the towel and quit and give up. That's, a, that's, that's not a very good way to think. And today, it's really a sinful way to live. So hearing comes when we today, we really come to the point, God wants to work healing in our life, and that only comes in our life when we leave today the self-absorption that we find ourselves in and we begin to take responsibility for our lives, for others, and for the kingdom of God. We've got to get ourselves focused. Remember the writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 12 and 2, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So what did David do? Let's, let's look and see what happened here. One, he organized an army. More importantly, David began to talk to God. He started to seek God's will and God's way in his life. And God has a will and a way for you and I. But if you're not seeking it, then you're not walking in the path that God wants you in. And you're walking in human reasoning that always leads you to a dead end street. And that's why some of you are living on a dead end street right now. It's because you're trusting what you think. You're trusting what everybody else has told you. And you're trusting what you feel. And you're not living by faith. Living by faith is what makes the difference. And that indeed will bring you into a closer, genuine walk with God. He would soon become, I mean, King David was advised by the prophet Gad to move into the territory of Judah. He would then soon become king of that land. And there were two keys for David, and you better mark these down. One, it was basically direct conversation with God. That's your prayer life. And are you praying? Are you calling on the Lord? Man, I tell you what, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person does more than avail much. It makes a lot happen. And God does great and mighty things. So if one, you've got to have direct conversation with God. I'm just asking, okay? How's your prayer life? Are you spending as much time in prayer as you are with Hollywood? Are you spending as much time talking to God as you do in front of a television set or a video game? 
The second thing that you've got to do not only is to communicate with God in prayer, you've got to start obeying God. Well, I don't know what to do. That's what you pray. And God will show you what to do. That's why you read God's word. So God can show you what to do, and then God can reveal his will and his work in your life. So David's direction was back to God, and back to service of God, and back to where God wanted David to be. Can I ask you a personal question? Are you where God wants you to be, or are you just going through the routine of life? You're on a, like a um, treadmill. You're going hard and strong, but you're not getting anywhere in your spiritual life. Hit the off button. Stop. Pause. Call upon God. Reflect. And let God lead you. The only way out of the wilderness is to come back to God. Maybe you've gotten away from him. Maybe you're not serving him. Maybe you're not loving him and living for him. You need today a spiritual revival in your life that only comes through recognizing where you are. Your life and my life, as James said, it's a vapor. It appears it's gone. What we do for Christ now is what counts. David experienced forgiveness. He also not only experienced forgiveness, but experienced the restoring power of God. I'm glad that God forgives when you call on him. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will purify you. He will blot out your every transgression. He will remove your every iniquity. He will put you in a right standing before him. God will do a mighty work in your life. And folks, listen, you've got to get to that place today of crying out to God and repenting. You don't hear that much, do you? You don't hear that. You watch the uh, television preacher, if you do. You don't hear that. You hear about prosperity theology. Do this. Give me that. Send me money and all this and hocus pocus and I'll do this and whatever. No. Don't send them your money. Your money belongs at the local New Testament church. Not to the guy on television, radio, or elsewhere. That's one thing that you have never seen me do in anything that we do on a live TV. I've never asked you for a dime. And thank God, God supplies the need for this ministry. I tell you, friend, you today need to give your life afresh and anew to God. You need that spiritual revival that will bring you back into a close walk with God today. And you then can do as David did. You can become the person after God's own heart. You are not satisfied unless you are in the full, complete will of God. You may find yourself in those places of difficulty and challenge. And just because you're walking with God doesn't mean that you don't face them. You will and you shall. We all do. But those places today understand that we find hard times. It's the God of heaven who brings us through those hard times. It's the God who's with us and for us. It's the God of provision and grace today. Those places today that maybe, you know, you haven't listened to God in the past, but all that's going to change, and you're going to start listening to the direction and the leadership of God. God doesn't speak audibly, Pastor. No, but he sure speaks through his word. He'll speak to you through what he says in his word, if you'll open it and read it. He'll speak to you through your circumstances. He'll speak to you through other people. He'll speak to you through the message from God's own word. You need to get in church so you can hear the word of God. It'll help you. And, and, and there are various and sundry ways that God can speak to you. And sometimes you just need to, here's a good one, you just need to be still and know that he is God and let God speak to you. I encourage our people in church. I say, you know, when you come to the altar and pray, don't jump up when you say the amen. Remain there for a little season and let God speak to you and let God touch your life and give you direction today. Places today, listen, we're not here to survive when God has already given us the promise that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So therefore, you will never get in the right place until you get your direction back with God and that you're trusting him, living for him, and serving him, and he's first in your life. Well, Pastor, I just feel like I'm never going to get out of this wilderness. If you keep that mindset, you might as well pitch a tent there and drive the stakes down tight. 
because that's where you're going to live. But it's not where you have to live. You can come back to the Lord. He'll forgive you. He'll restore you. He'll refresh you. And he'll revive you. That's what our God will do in four easy words. So you can today get out of this position of feeling sorry for yourself and living in complacency and defeat and wanting everybody to to pat you on top of your head and tell you, oh, it's going to be all right. Well, as long as you're staying like you are, it's not. You've got to make a decision that you want out of the wilderness that you're in. You've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired, as the old saying goes. And you've got to return to the, to the God of your salvation and put your confidence in Him. God's able, if you are simply willing to come to Him, call upon Him, trust in Him, and put your faith in Him, and live for Him. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you, oh, it's just as easy as rolling off a log as the old saying goes. No. It takes real Christian people to live the life they live for God. That means that through the adversities and when the times are dark, you know who's guiding you and you know who's holding your hand. When you feel like giving up, you don't. Remember Jeremiah the prophet? I mean, all the travail and trial and trouble he went through but he says, there's a fire burning in my bones and I can't quit. And you know what? You can't either. You know why you can't? Because you're too far in debt with the Lord. You can't give up and throw in the towel. You've got to take up the cross and follow Jesus. Oh, when you do that, the freedom that you'll feel in your life and the refreshing that he'll bring to you and just to have that peace that exceeds all understanding, overwhelming and overtaking your life, I'm telling you, friend, you will not only feel the joy of the Lord in your life now, but when you stand before Him, you can rejoice that you live for our God. And one day we will stand before Him. One day we'll give an account. Please, don't be in that position of suffering loss. God's not going to listen to your excuses He's not going to listen to, well, you know, for 14 months we went through a pandemic and blah, blah, blah. No, God's not calling for your stories. God's calling for your life. And he wants you to live for him and serve him and be faithful to him. Only God today offers us lasting security and lasting blessings. David said, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf will not wither and whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. Read Psalm 1. And we today can see God work in our life if we will come to God and let him work in our living. That's his desire. It's not that God wants to lead you around by your nose. It's God wanting to bless you abundantly. That you're not living under the wilderness experience. You're not just getting by, getting through, hanging on, surviving, and all those other cliche words that we use that we try to excuse our way through what we're facing and trying to feel defeatism. Let me tell you what. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Take Ephesians 6 and read it. That's the chapter in Ephesians that will give you the armor that you need to put on that will make you strong. You need that helmet of salvation. You need the breastplate of righteousness. You need your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need the loins girded with truth. You need everything that God gives you in his word that when you're facing the enemy and going through, you remember that the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And he already won that battle at the cross through his blood. I really pray today that on spiritual perspective, that you will get the right perspective that God has for your life today and what he wants to do in your life if you'll simply come to him and trust him and let him work in your living, in your family. Be an example to your husband, to your wife, to your children, to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors. Let them know that God has done a work in your life you're not walking through hump-shouldered and defeated any longer. You're standing tall for Jesus because you are more than a conqueror through him. 
You have trusted the Lord. And if you're lost, he'll save you. Give him your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sin of rejecting him and ask him to come into your life. And he shall. And then now take up the mantle. Take up the cross. Take up the word. Take up your faith and follow Jesus and watch him do a mighty work in your life. Again, thank you today for taking a few moments and being with me. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church, and I'm so delighted to join me on Spiritual Perspective. I want to give you another great perspective you can have in your life, and that's to be in church this Sunday at Gethsemane Baptist Church, 411 Blue Ridge Street, here in the heart of Lynchburg, right off of Lakeside Drive, just one block. Not hard to find. We're near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. And I'm in a study right now from the book of Joshua in Old Testament. Oh, my Lord, it's powerful. God has been moving in this church like a mighty rushing wind. And he will move in your life if you'll come and partake of what God has for you. We have a beautiful worship facility. We have wonderful people that love the Lord and will greet you with a smile and let you know they're glad that you're here. We have an awesome God that works in our services. And we've got great music, the preaching of God's word. And the moving of God's spirit, whoo, it's just overtaking. And you can be a part of that. We have the kitty care kit for your youngsters, whether it's teens or the little ones. They will enjoy that and it will be a great blessing to them. And you indeed are welcome into the doors of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Again, join me on Facebook, Carlton Duck, Wednesdays at 5 and 7. Also check out those recipes, Cooking with Carlton, on the Facebook page. Also... Go to the website, AliveGBC.com. It's been on the foot of the screen throughout the program. You can go there and get great spiritual information. And also you can find out how in about 10 to 15 seconds you can get a digital bulletin. It's better than any printed bulletin you have ever gotten. And it doesn't cost you a dime. And you can look at it at home, in church, anywhere you want to. And you'll be blessed by it. I promise you that. And be sure to come see us here at Gethsemane. I would love to see you and have you in a worship service. Just come try Gethsemane and see if it doesn't bless the socks off of you, I promise. Thank you again for tuning in to Spiritual Perspective. Come see me this Sunday, Gethsemane Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia. And may God mightily bless and encourage your heart. And remember, you don't have to live in the wilderness. You can live for Jesus and be victorious in all things. God bless you. Thank you.